Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this vintage lace clothespin angel Christmas ornament. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make the vintage lace clothespin angel ornament, we'll start with the clothespin. I have already created the faces on these clothespins and of course, you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. I'm working my way through my latest lot of vintage lace and I have selected a few options. This one, so far I have used this lace for every single project in this collection. And I think I'm gonna use this um, either for the bodice or for behind the head, kind of like a halo, I'm not really sure. And then this one I'll use for the skirt. We'll gather it up around her waist. That'll be good. It's just the right length. This lace is two and a quarter inches and I'll cut about 10 inches of that. I only have a little bit of this left and I'm going to gather this up around her waist. So she'll have a bodice and a skirt and sort of like this for a, a waist ruffle. Let's call it a waist ruffle. Um, I'm, I need to decide if I'm going to use this for the bodice or one of these other options. I have a few options. There are so many um, laces like these in my new lot that any one of them would work. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this one behind her head and then I chose this one for her bodice. This lace has, um, you know, a larger scallop and a smaller scallop, larger, smaller. So I'm gonna, you know, separate this larger scallop and use that for her bodice, just like that. So I'll cut this to center that larger scallop. Um, I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue to the wrong side of this and then I'll place this right here and glue it to secure. That looks good. Now I'll add a little bit more glue and I will pull these ends around to the back. That looks good. And now I'm going to cut a 10 inch length of this lace for her skirt. I'll fold it with the right sides together and I'm going to seam up this end right here with my sewing machine. You can of course just sew this by hand if you like. Here we go, I'll turn this right side out and then I'm gonna gather up the top edge. First, I'm going to secure my thread into the seam allowance there at the back center. And then I'll just gather this up with a running stitch all the way around the top edge. There we go, that will become her skirt. And I'm gonna place the skirt right here at her waist. Um, not all the way touching this. Oh, I need a little bit of more glue on there. Um, but pretty close. So maybe about a half an inch above this little split. I'll pull that tight. Make sure the seam is in the back. Distribute the gathers evenly. And then I'll wrap the thread around and secure it with glue. It doesn't have to be perfect. And, you know, I'm working with vintage lace and I'm just sort of making do with what I have. But of course, you can go to the store and buy new lace and make this design or you can just sort of adapt to whatever you have in your stash. So if your lace is a little bit shorter or longer or wider or narrower, I think a lot of laces would work for this. All right, so I'm gonna glue that to secure. 
So I'm going to lift up the skirt, up, apply some glue right there, and then press that into the glue. And then I'll repeat for the front. I'll apply some glue right there and then press the skirt into this. There's the glue and I'll just turn it down. That looks pretty good. I see that I have a flower sort of centered in the front. That was just an accident, but it looks good. Now I'm going to fill in this sort of in-between space by gathering up this, which is about 5 eighths of an inch wide and about 12 inches long. I'm not going to seam up the ends. I'm just going to start gathering, but I'll fold it over just so I have something a little bit more to, um, to start, you know, to secure the knot. And then I kind of loop it through like that. Oops. on the fold. And then again, I'll just do a running stitch. There we go. I'm at the end, so I'll pull this tight. Now this is all I had left of this lace, so I could have gone a little bit longer, but I think I can manage with this and I'm just going to put, look how cute that's going to be. Oh, it's gonna be adorable. So I'll join the ends in the back then I'll distribute the fullness and secure it with glue. The glue is actually on the wood of the clothespin and then I'm pressing that into it. And then I'm going to secure this in the front. There we go. That looks good. Now I'm using this felt from, it's called Weir, I think, Crafts, and it's the Ecru color. And it's eight inches wide. So I just cut a, the smallest little strip that I could and then cut it in half. That's why I have two pieces for the arms, but you only really need one. So I'm gonna glue the center of this strip four by I don't know, more than an eighth of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch. And I'm just gonna glue it to the back of her neck. Just fold it over to determine the center. Add a little bit of glue. Just put it right on the back of her neck, kind of high, like right there. And that'll be her hands. Now, I have to decide what I want her to hold because I want to get the arms secured before I go on instead of waiting to the end because I don't want to accidentally get the arms caught up in another step. So I'm pretty sure I want to use these flowers. They're a very, very pale blue color. I have this white uh, florist tape. You can find this usually in the, like the wedding department of the craft store. These are just little paper forget-me-not flowers. I got these on eBay. If you search on eBay for paper forget-me-nots, you'll find them. So this will be her little bouquet. So I wrapped it and then cut it off like this. I could cut it a little bit shorter, I think. And then I will kind of like flatten out the flowers so that they all show more toward the front and I'm not gluing one face down. And then I decide how I want the arms. I think I'm gonna glue the flowers first and then glue the arms to the stem. I'm gonna tilt it a little bit and this stem might be a little long. I think I might trim that. Be a little bit better. I'll put one hand underneath this flower and maybe the other one as well. So the two hands will sort of be clasping the stem of the bouquet. I'll just add a tiny bit of glue to secure. Now let's make her hair. I'm using this loopy mohair yarn and I'm going to wrap it five times. I'm holding my end and I'm going to make a figure eight. One, 
two, three, four, five. I'm gonna make two of these bundles. And, you know, I thought, well, usually I do two bundles, one for the front and one for the back because I have the hanging loop coming through. And this time it's just a solid top. And so I thought maybe I could just <laughs> wrap it 10 times and call it a day, but that didn't quite work because the center was just so thick. It didn't look quite right. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the two. So here's the first bundle. I'm gonna use this for the back. I will secure this to the top of the head with glue, but a little bit behind the center. Can you see the center right there? So it'll be a little bit further back. This also makes the hair a little bit longer in the back, which I like. So there's my glue. And I'll place the center knot into the glue just behind the top center of the head. And then I'll add some more glue to the back right here. And then I'll sort of press this into that glue. There we go. So I'm just sort of pressing the hair into the back of the, the head. And now a second, um, second little bundle. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna take this second end and wrap it around the center of this figure eight bundle all the way, a complete revolution. Is that the right word? Around the center. Okay, then I'm gonna pick up the original tail and use that to tie the knot. And I'm gonna do a square knot, just two, two knots. That will hold it just fine because it's gonna be glued right away. Then I always try to leave a little extra here. Number one, I feel like it it's, it's less likely to come apart. Number two, sometimes it works out where those little ends just look like bangs and they're very cute. All right, so now I'm going to add some glue to the top of her head, right in the center. And I will press that center of the bundle right there into the glue. And then for this front, I'm gonna twist it toward the back and glue that to the side of the face. So it'll be twist and glue. This is just the way that I do the hair on um, larger angels. It's the same sort of technique. There's some glue, and so I twist and press. That looks good. I applied my glue, and then twist toward the back and press into the glue. Great. That looks good. This hair is a little bit random if you like a more regular look, I would recommend using just a smoother yarn and not a loopy yarn. Because loopy yarn, it, it just kind of gives it a little bit extra personality. <laughs> so I have this gold and white baker's twine that is, I have threaded onto a needle and I'm gonna use this for the hanging loop. So I'm, I'm sewing through the top of the hair and I'm sewing right through the glue. So I can feel it's going through the glue and it feels very secure. Just tie that off, trim it. All right, so this is the front of the lace and I'm gonna apply some glue right here. And remember, you might not have the exact same look, but it's probably about an inch across and I think you can find something similar. Or you don't need it, or you can cut something out from felt. There's just so many things you could do. That looks cute, but I'm still going to add a wire halo. I just like a little bit of extra sparkle and I want it to be very clear that we are making an angel not just a doll or a girl. So there you go. This is not much more than an inch of wire. This is 20 gauge wire and I just shaped it around my thimble. I'll add a dot of glue to each end. And then I'm gonna stick each end into the sides 
a little bit in front of the hanging loop and I, I tilted it. So it's tilted forward a little bit. It's not just straight up. Can you see that from the side? So here's how she looks so far. Sometimes I'll color in the feet too, but I want this to be quick and easy. So the last step is going to be the wings. I have a couple of options for wings. I also have all kinds of extra things. You could use a little felt cutout or a bow, you know, all kinds of things. But I did cut out a couple of these scalloped circles. I used my die cutting machine and here's what the die looks like. Bell binders, nest abilities, S4293. I cut out two different sizes and then I just folded it in half and did a little zigzag to secure. It looks good for the from the front or the back, they're the same. So there's that, which is cute, right? That looks good. Or that, hmm. I'm kind of torn and of course if you don't have this you can always cut a circle I'll tell you the diameter of this uh, a little more than two and a half including the scallops I think I like this one better I think this one's a little too overwhelming so I will um, apply a little bit of glue to the top center here right by this fold and press that onto the back of her head. I always like the angels to have a little bit of sparkle, maybe some metallic, and usually just a little bit of color. Like not, you know, I'm not gonna make the dress and the arms and the wings and everything color, but just a little touch of color I like. And she's done. She's really fast and easy. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.